Next at 6, a deadly industrial accident in the triad. A worker was killed at a renovation site. Plus, South Carolina state senators approve removing that Confederate flag from Capitol grounds. But tonight, the future of that flag is uncertain. And new charges against the man accused of killing nine people at church in Charleston. How it stems from people who survived that attack. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sharon Stone. We'll have those stories coming right up. First here at 6 o'clock. Meteorologist Monty Montello is here with the first check of your weather on the ones forecast. I uh, feel like the heat is coming back, Monty. It is hit 90 today. All right, this breaking right now, this in Winston-Salem. A worker is dead following an industrial accident. This accident was reported around 340 on Vine Street. Our Kristen Drummond is live at that scene with the latest for us. Kristen. All right, Kristen, thank you for that update. Uh, the South Carolina State Senate votes to remove the Confederate battle flag from State House grounds in Columbia. Now the issue is up to the State House of Representatives. There is growing momentum to remove that flag from government-owned property following the Charleston Church shooting. Sean Flynn takes a look at the latest step in taking down the Stars and Bars. If the State House votes to remove the flag tomorrow, they will need to come back Thursday to take one last vote. Charleston Church shooting suspect Dylan Roof is facing new charges in addition to the nine counts of murder. A prosecutor says he's been indicted on three new attempted murder charges stemming from people who survived that June 17th shooting at Emanuel AME Church. Roof also faces a weapons charge. Federal authorities have not said if they will pursue hate crime charges against him. Cleanup crews spent this afternoon removing graffiti from the Silent Sam statue at UNC Chapel Hill. Over the weekend, someone sprayed Black Lives Matter and murderer on the Confederate Memorial. This memorial is a tribute to students who fought in the Civil War. Over in Durham County, deputies want to know who spray painted a similar message on the Confederate statue outside the old county courthouse. You can still kind of see where the paint was washed off there. The two incidents follow one from last week. Someone sprayed a similar message on a Confederate monument at the Maplewood Cemetery in Durham. We talked with one NCCU professor who says this is not the way to spread a message. And we're talking about having a conversation rather that is about uh, how do we come to a healthy disagreement and start to make things happen. This, what we saw happen today, this is not the answer. UNC Chapel Hill and Durham investigators have not said if they believe all three incidents are connected. Federal officials say an F-16 fighter jet collided midair with a small plane in South Carolina this morning and it killed two people. The FAA says the fighter jet collided with a Cessna C-150 around 11, about 11 miles north of Charleston. The impact killed both passengers inside the Cessna. However, an Air Force spokeswoman says the pilot of the F-16 was able to eject himself safely. The F-16 originated from Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina. The names of those involved have not been released. We have an update now to a story we brought you last night out of York County, South Carolina. The Sheriff's Office says four people found dead in Rock Hill over the weekend died in a murder-suicide. Deputies believe Randy Moore shot and killed his wife, son, and his son's girlfriend before turning the gun on himself. Two of the victims were found inside the home. The other two were found outside. Moore's wife, Anna, was an assistant county manager in York County. In a statement, the sheriff's office said, we want to make sure we investigate this case thoroughly with the hope to understand how and why this tragedy took place. Investigators are still waiting on forensic evidence from the crime lab. Subway is suspending their relationship with spokesman Jared Fogle, while FBI and Indiana State Police have him under investigation. Both agencies raided his home this morning, removing a number of electronics. The FBI only confirms at this time they're conducting an investigation. They would not confirm if it involved Fogle. Local media is reporting that he was detained while electronics were removed from the home and analyzed inside a mobile forensics van. Fogel became the restaurant's pitchman after losing more than 200 pounds while eating Subway sandwiches and exercising. The FBI is working to identify more victims of an online sexual predator who targeted teens because he said adult women were, quote, too smart to fall for his scheme. 
31-year-old Lucas Chancellor is now serving 105 years in federal prison, but investigators say these are some of the most common scream names he used. Court documents say he blackmailed hundreds of girls across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. into giving him sexually explicit photos and videos. Now they're hoping more of those teens will come forward. So if any of those names on the screen look familiar to you, you can search sexploitation at twcnews.com to find out more about what you should do next. Stokes County residents could soon see improvements to their waterways thanks to some projects in the works funded by Duke Energy Settlement with the government. Our Meg Smith is live in our Triad newsroom to explain. Meg. That's right, Sharon. I had the proof. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. North Carolina doesn't regulate the use of zip lines. Instead, each county is left to decide what makes them safe and what doesn't. Well, after the death of a young girl last month, some lawmakers are pushing for one standard. Arlene O'Connell explains this proposal. All news. The new legislation has been passed in the Senate. The House will hear it next week. If it passes, the study must be completed by February 2016. And we're back with your sports after the break.